how to pay off your 30 year mortgage in five to seven years. Yes, it can be done. And this is the ultimate guide to help you do it. Here we are at our very first rental property. Hey everyone, I'm Clayton Morris. I'm Natalie Morris. And we are longtime real estate investors and we left our day jobs a number of years ago thanks to passive income. And this whole channel is devoted to helping you become financially intelligent and financially free. And we know a thing or two about this pay down your mortgage strategy. Number one, we wrote a whole book about it. It's called How to Pay Off Your Mortgage in Five Years. You can see the link in the description below. But we've employed this strategy multiple times. And when you are done watching this video today, my hope is that you will have a deep understanding about how exactly to do this and pay off your mortgage in a short amount of time. Now, this is an aggressive goal, of course, because when you went to the bank, you signed for a 30-year mortgage, most likely, right? So think about it, how you could be out from underneath this huge weight, this huge debt in mm -hmm. your life in a much shorter time. So what we teach you to do is, like I said, it's aggressive, but even if you employ small bits of this advice in small chunks over time, you're still gonna not pay a mortgage for 30 years. You're still gonna take a whole bunch of years off of that commitment. We promise you that. All you have to do is educate yourself and stick with the plan. You can live mortgage-free. Plenty of people do it. And I love one of the reviews of our book, which is even if I employ 10% of this strategy, I will still save myself tens of thousands of dollars. So again, to Natalie's point, even if you only use a portion of what we're about to talk about here over the next few minutes, this could dramatically change your life. Now let's go back to the beginning here and talk about the mortgage, okay? Because step one in this whole process is to really understand your mortgage. And most people believe that, you know, getting the home they live in and getting in debt with cars, that's the way to build the American dream. And we now know that owning the house you live in, having that big mortgage is not an asset. It's not putting cash in your pocket. It's taking money from you every month. No, it's what keeps you from being financially free. It's probably the thing that you stress out about the most when say you pop a tire or you have a big Big unexpected expense, you're like, oh no, how am I going to pay your mortgage, right? right? So we want you to educate yourself on what it is you're committed to inside of that mortgage so that you understand how to attack it because you can really only slay the dragon you know, right? right? So if we, in the book, we deep dive this and we'll talk about it now, like understanding what's in your mortgage, most people really don't. And I, I, we don't say that to be smug. Well, I no, because that's how we were. I always assumed that the mortgage was just made up of all kinds of bits and bobs like fees for this or fees for that, right? It's actually a bit more, a bit less complicated than that when you really take a look at your statement. And a lot of people think, well, I can afford the payment, so therefore I can afford to live in that place. Well, okay, that's one way to look at it, but right. it's kind of a myopic way to look at things because you're committing yourself to paying the bank a lot of money in order to live in that place, right? You're not actually paying for the place itself. Your mortgage is paying the bank to take a risk to lend you money to live there. Right, so what goes into your mortgage? I mean, you have to have this financial intelligence. So if you feel like, oh, I wanna to skip to the, the meat of this, no, this is the meat right here. We're getting to the meat. And really understanding that what goes into your mortgage, principal, interest, your tax payments, or private mortgage insurance, PMI. There's a lot of these things that are hidden inside of your mortgage you might not know about. Do you know how much interest you're currently paying per month? Most people just think they're writing a blank, you know, a check to their mortgage and it's one payment. Well, guess what? For the first seven or eight years of you paying that 30-year mortgage, you're really only paying interest. Only paying money to the bank. Interest That's is amazing. just a fee. So in the book, we talk about how interest is basically just the fee that I am taking as the lender for giving you money. It assures that I am going to get money back every month and I'm making money on taking a risk of lending you a big chunk of money. Now, we don't make the point that the banks shouldn't make this money. Of course they should, right? We need banks to be around because that's how our economy works. But you don't have to pay them forever this exorbitant amount. You control how much you pay them because you say, I need 30 years. And they say, okay, well then we'll make this much over the 30 years. But if you went back to them and said, actually, I decide I only want 10 years, 
they would say, okay, fine, we need less money because we'll get our money back sooner, right? It's an exchange. So what we're encouraging you to do is give them back their principal faster so that you don't pay them their fee for 30 years. And then over time, that saves you thousands and thousands of dollars in interest. So what you need to understand, step two in this process, is that the main enemies in your mortgage two are of them, two, of them. two, time and interest. Principal is not your main enemy. Principal is what you and the bank agreed that you would borrow in order to buy the house, right? But because you've agreed to pay the bank back in so many years, and because you've agreed for an interest payment to be put on top of every month's payment, your two main enemies are interest and time. Attack either one of those, and the amount that you're paying to the bank shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. The amount of principal that you have to pay back shrinks and shrinks and shrinks until eventually you own the house with zero dollars owed to the bank. So you could try to attack these things individually. You could try to go after interest individually. You could try to go after time individually. But guess what? That you doesn't really work. You can't go really after work. time individually unless you have a time machine. Right. How if do you, you have if you have a time machine, you could go after time. You could get creative about going after this, right? You could reduce refinance, you could shrink the size, the length of the mortgage, etc. But it's not until you go after principal, which allows you to go after both things simultaneously, right? right? Interest and time. So going after principal is the one thing, that's the one dragon that you want to slay more than anything else, is going after that principal balance. So let me give you a visual, right? You've got a two head a dragon mm -hmm. interest and time principle is your sword it's the only way you can slay those things does that make sense i thought that was pretty clever that is pretty actually. good and I, you know so people will say and let's put these disclaimers in there right now because i can already see the common thread exploding on this video saying well great Clayton and Natalie, why wouldn't you just make that one extra payment, you know, per year to your mortgage, right? Right, and that is one way to use that sword. But that is not, only one way. But though. it's not a great way. Why? Because you're still only making that one extra payment, and you're not you're, you're you you are reducing interest in time, but you're not doing it in the ways that we really lay out in the book, which is doing it multiples, 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 right? And oftentimes people will write that check, and they're making one extra mortgage payment. I see it all the time. Just make one extra mortgage payment. Just make one extra mortgage payment. But what you're doing, you're still paying the interest on it. You're not paying the principal. You're just making one extra payment. And that really helps you very, very little. Right. If you don't use those dollars that you've dedicated even to that one extra payment, let's say you make an extra payment of $1,000 per month and you just send it to the bank with like Bank of America written on the check and you send it in, they're going to take their interest payment out of it unless you specifically write to them that this is principal only. So think of principal, again, as your main sword. Right. It's your sledgehammer. It's your magic wand. Principal is how you attack the mortgage. It's, so your, it's your elder wand, what Harry we Potter do, fans. Right. What we do is give you an amortization sheet, which you can download right underneath this video. Yeah, we're going to give it to you for free. Just right below this video, free gift. It's Natalie's built this great amortization calculator download. So it's right below this video. So grab it. So we give you this amortization sheet. You have to use uh, a, you have to use a spreadsheet for it because amortization is very complicated. And so what you do is just like play with it. Put extra money in the extra principal only column and you'll see how much the amount of interest you are committed to to the bank over time just shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. So what we teach you to do in the book and what we hope to do in this in this uh, show as well is find ways that you can make larger principal payments. Well, where are you going to do that, right? You you find some inheritance, you shake down a bank, right? That kind you of so If you shake down a bank that defeats the purpose because you're robbing the same yeah. bank you own. Don't rob a bank. So uh, step three in this process is to find ways to attack the principal in order to kill these two main enemies, right? So we teach you to evaluate assets you may not have already thought of that can go into your mortgage. For instance, you may have equity in your home that you can borrow against from the bank at a lower interest rate. That gives you access to a big chunk of cash that you can then put into your principal payment 
of your amortized mortgage at a more favorable interest rate. That's okay, this, one big way. This is one of my favorite ways, okay? And we, in the book, deep dive the, the HELOC strategy, the home equity line of credit strategy. We're not gonna deep dive it here because you might not have a HELOC. You might not have access to a HELOC and therefore it might go over your head. But just know that when you have one type of banking product, which is a HELOC, it's different than your 30-year mortgage. It's a different type of interest. Almost treat it like a credit card. It's using simple interest. It's structured differently. And so by you taking that home equity line of credit, yes, the interest rate might be different, but again, it's a different banking product. And even if you took 5,000 out of it or 10,000 out of it and you zapped it at your principal balance, watch that amortization calculator. It's amazing what will happen. Now, this is the primary way that we have paid down mortgages using this strategy, using the home equity line of credit strategy. So this is just one simple way that you can do it. And then you pay back that HELOC over a few months mm -hmm. from your payroll or from wherever you make your money, your revenue, and then you do it again. You fire another $10,000 right at the principal balance of this primary mortgage and boom, boom, boom. It just keeps dropping like a hammer. Right. So it's hard to illustrate these numbers to you in a, in a show, just talking about numbers. We hope your eyes don't glaze over, but we do encourage you to read the book and watch how the numbers do shake themselves out. Now, another way to find some cash that you hadn't thought to use is a 401k loan. What, a 401k? I'm told you're never ever supposed to touch your 401k. Right, so right? the marketing around the 401k would have you think that it is an amazing investment vehicle. Well, once you become pretty good at evaluating finances, you'll see a 401k is not actually so amazing. It's a pretty mediocre way to partner with the government to invest in the stock market. Right. That's basically what a 401k is, okay? So you probably have some money there that you could loan to yourself. Now think about this. You can become the lender. So me, Natalie, lends me, Natalie, the mortgage holder, let's say $10,000 out of my 401k. And I commit, the mortgage holder, Natalie, commits to paying back the I, uh, 401k holder, Natalie, let's say 4% over the term of two years, right? So now I'm paying that note back to myself. I'm making money in my 401k because I'm paying myself back, but I've also taken that money and used it as a sword against our two main enemies, interest and time. I've shrunken my mortgage a ton. Is that a word? Shrunken? Sh shrunken, yeah. Okay. Like a shrunken head. I've shrunken my mortgage a ton and the interest that I'm committed to. And I'm now making money on a different loan. Instead of paying that interest to the bank, I'm paying that money to me, Natalie, the 401k holder. Right. So now there are a couple extra th little tidbits. Can I give some tidbits here on the 401k? Okay, sure. Little nuggets yeah. of goodness. I love this strategy, okay? Because the 401k is yours, right? It's your money sitting there in an account set up with your, the, your place of employment and you're loaning it to yourself. It's not a withdrawal. So you're not getting a penalty, right? That's yeah. different. That's not what we're talking about. It's a loan. Very, very easy to do, usually within one or two clicks on your website, Fidelity or Wells Fargo, whoever holds your 401k. And the same thing works for military uh, retirement accounts as well. I know because we've heard from a lot of you who are in the military who have done this strategy. So thank you for sharing that with us. It's just as easy to do. When you do that, you're paying yourself back to Natalie's point and you're paying the interest to the bank of you, not paying it to Bank of America or some other bank. You're paying it to yourself, okay? The beauty of this is that the federal government only allows you to contribute a certain amount of money every year to your 401k, right? It's like 17,500 or whatever it is, whatever the max is when you're watching this video, they adjust it all the time. There's a max that you're allowed to uh, loan, uh, to, to put into your 401k every year, okay? By doing this strategy, when you pay yourself back with that interest, you can actually exceed legally the, the IRS standard and the limit for the 401k federally for the year. So this is pretty creative thinking when it comes to finances because most people think I pay my mortgage, I contribute to my 401k, and I sort of just like keep treading water and, and then hope that I'm rising right in the grand scheme of things. Well, okay, that is one way to do it. A lot of people live their lives that way, fine, right? But what we're encouraging you to do is think creatively 
and think sort of like, I like to think of it like a teeter totter, like put your options on two sides. Which one do I make more money on? Which one do I pay more money on? And then make informed decisions. Now, if you don't have a 401k or you don't have equity in your home, right? So these options are not gonna be very good for you. Then that extra payment every year is a great option. We also, we like to, we're so obsessed with knocking down that mortgage that we find any little chunk of change and we put it towards principal. So we use a cashback rewards card through Capital One when we get cash back in the form of a check, they send it in the mail. And it's usually like four, it's, it's super random number, like $488, right? I take that to the bank and I put it down on principal because I like to see how much that $488 that I didn't earn, right? I just spent money like I normally would and got cash back, now goes towards shrinking my principal I, like that kind of thing is such a high for me. So Natalie's done a lot of research on these credit cards. One that we use is that Capital One card. We'll have a link below in the description because I think we use like the Spark card for business rewards. So we get for the- For business rewards yeah. is different though. You can't take business rewards as, and just like use that cash for your personal mortgage because um, you'd be taxed on it. Oh, so we have a venture card also that we, we use We have a them. personal venture card okay. for our personal, yeah. So Don't we, do that. Don't use business rewards dollars personally. Um, it's not allowed. You can use business rewards for travel, for personal travel, and that's fine. There's no way for the government to really get at that um, yet, right. now that I've given them the idea. But the link is below to the card that we use, the venture card that we use. So you get, you get the cash back. It's not a lot, right? But you're, even that like that $500 payment or that $700 payment that you're firing towards the principal balance, again, play with the amortization calculator, and you're going to see, holy smokes, that maybe just took four months of payments off of my yeah. balance sheet. It's crazy how that actually works. Another way that you can you know, pay down some extra principal is to honestly, I mean, I know this seems like duh, but no, it's not. Like look around your house. There might be an old camera, an old TV. There might be an old PlayStation. There might be something that you could sell on Craigslist or eBay and make a thousand dollars. Nobody does it that way anymore. They I do Facebook swaps. Or Facebook swap, right? We've sold like furniture on Facebook swaps. Yeah. I sold off a bunch of ties and like, you know, ties. From his network a, news job. Yeah, yeah, a couple hundred ties that I had or a couple hundred dollars. I sold off like 20 or 30 ties, you know? And so you can look around. There is stuff that you are hoarding right now that you could probably make $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 on in your house and pay down the principal balance on your mortgage. And I guarantee you, you will save months and months and months of payments just by gathering up and selling stuff on the local swap right. groups. I mean, you can get really obsessed about this. Every now and again, I sit around and I think to myself, I don't wanna own all this junk. I wanna sell it to somebody else. And then I like, I really think about how this is not a performing asset. I don't want it in my house. And I get crazy and I yell at Clayton for like, why do we own three pressure washers or whatever, right? And then you start to think about like, how can I generate cash to turn it into my sword, right? That is principal right. payments to slash your two main enemy. I mean- Another big one is the tax refund. Uh, the tax the refund, The tax right? refund. So everyone gets excited, right? Oh, we're gonna get money back from the IRS for taxes this year. No, that's not something to get excited about, right? Number one, if you're getting money back in your taxes, then you're doing it wrong, okay? If you're, you're doing your taxes wrong or you don't have a great CPA, but if you do get money back from your tax returns, don't celebrate and go have a Super Bowl party or whatever you're gonna do, or go out to dinner. Take that money, that $1,000 or $800 or $4,000 and fire it right at your principal, principal balance. Principal payment, use yes. it for your sword, yeah. I mean, babysit some kids, mow some lawns, shovel snow for the neighbor, whatever. You know, like for me, it's just any kind of like extra that we have not committed to our budget I make sure that's going boom, right into our two main enemies is interest in time. So step four in this process is to then to work this amateurization sheet, you know, sit there and study it and start to see, as Natalie said, ways that you can creatively just start firing at that principal balance. You gotta make it your beast, if you know what I mean. Like, make it your beast. You gotta know that and, and just go in there and pretend, like put some numbers in and be like, 
oh my god, if I didn't, like, if I cancel my cable bill. Point. If you still have cable, if you still use a cable box, then yes, get rid of cable and start streaming. You could even use YouTube TV for crying out loud and save like a hundred bucks a month. Use that extra hundred bucks a month that you're not paying for your cable bill to fire it right at your principal balance. And put that in your amortization sheet. Just right. start to think about it, right? Now, a lot of times when you are making your mortgage payment, you can mark online extra principal for this much. Um, I want to encourage you to double check that the banks have actually applied that to principal a lot of times they don't and they you have forget. to call them up or even i've even walked in a check and i've had it highlighted and circled principal only and they see they i see later they still took interest out of them and then you have to call up and scream um and so just keep on top of that yeah be diligent about it so thank you so much for subscribing to the channel we hope that you found this useful and again a few links we want to mention below there's that free amateurization calculator which is below get grab it and it'll help you tremendously that spreadsheet also a link to our book how to pay off your mortgage in five years it is a bestseller on amazon so thank you so much for making it a bestseller this is what this channel is all about helping you create financial freedom in your life. We'll see you next time, everyone.